Hey, how are you doing, Dr. Shu? Hey, John. How's everything going? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Just... Wow. What, what an opportunity here, you know? Yeah. You know, my, my life has been insane the last few months. <laughs> I'm sure it has been. I'm sure it has been. You know, you, I mean, since March, right, was when it, when it went out uh, publicly, right? With the BBC. I think NBC News had done something in January, but, you know, kind of took off at a whole nother level once the BBC took it. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, so, the BBC, I mean, the BBC really took that and they, there were a lot of, they, they blasted out of proportion, right? In the sense that, in the sense that they, um, they started to tell the story from, I mean, there's just too much they, they glossed over. So here's Superman, he's black, <laughs> right? We have a black- By the way, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting over a sprained ankle right now. So clearly I'm not Superman. <laughs> Well, that, you know, that's, that's what I want to get to is that, is that you're human. That's what we want to talk about. Yeah. You're human with certain superpowers, but you can be injured. 
Yep. The, Achilles, the Achilles tendon was one, right? We, we talked on the phone, so, so we can extend from there. So you got the Achilles tendon. Um, can, can, can you take a bullet, right? And of course you can take a bullet, but it might kill you, right? So, right, right. There, right? so I, I want people to realize that, that there's that story, but then there's the human side of you that if you were coached and we knew what you were when you were one years old and we gave you the best formulas, uh, we, 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 we helped you avoid certain situations. We put you inside of a, of a, of a, of a special you know, stadium where you were trained uh, by the best, right? Tiger Woods trained you in golf. What would happen, right? Good things would happen. You know? And then if we beat you on a stick instead, right? And we locked you in a cage, well, then certain other things would happen. So the environmental has a lot to do with it. So I, I want the people watching to know, like, what kind of toothpaste do you use? I still don't have the answer. Like, you are you a Crest user or a Colgate, Colgate user? <laughs> Colgate user, right? So, so you know, it, what does that even mean, right? It doesn't mean anything, but it's interesting stuff. What kind of shirts do you wear? Is it always this one? Um, Superman always wore, like, the same thing all the time. So <laughs> hopefully he washed his thing. Did he have, yeah. like, any <laughs> – does he have underarm sweat? Does he have to put, like, anything underneath, Right. We want to know, like, you know, there's something superhuman about you, which was your mother had the foresight as a as a as a school teacher. What grade did she teach? Uh, she's a high school history teacher. High school history. How does a high school history teacher know when they're very young to give them home cooked meals? Right. You know, and then and then when you went to boarding school to not go to the high school she was at because. She's she's all connected with everyone in the high school afterwards. Well, she taught in a different county. She taught in a different county, in which we lived. Oh, but you could have moved to that county. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. could have, but a lot of teachers don't move. Try not to live in the same county they teach at. Right. Right. I mean, right. It's like it's like I asked the question, you know, um, that um, that it, you know, like if you're a store owner and you're in your town. You would want to go to the chamber of commerce to mingle, right? Because that way people know your store and they come to your store. That's the right thing to do it right now. I'm going to take it one level up, right? Which is a landlord. You know what landlords do? Landlords do not go to the chamber of commerce and say, hi, by the way, I own this place and, um, and I like to mingle. Now, doesn't that not make any sense? Because if, it, if a place goes vacant, right? If you don't want vacancies, you and you want them to be filled, wouldn't you want to know people in your community or want them to know you? But no, the landlord, the Lord, right, is removed, right, is removed from the situation. And we don't want to really do that, right? I mean, it's 2021. We want to know our community, we want our community to know us, and we're part of that ecosystem, right? So if we knew, here's the big question, if we knew that John Hollis was a super, had this super, you know, ability in the blood you want some of it you want some of this you want this black gold right you want black gold right this black blood that is gold right you want this to save your life well you better be really nice to them right <laughs> you don't want to go you don't want to go hey you know what can i have some of your blood now right but what if you i also didn't this? have super antibodies in my blood until after i was exposed to the virus yeah right it's never been exposed right okay and it just has that super antibody like how did you get that right? when i get exposed to the virus i mean your body creates it in response to the virus. It wasn't like I had it my entire life, but basically only had super yeah, but, but how did you healed. have the, okay, so was, but you had this special healing ability when you were really young, you had faster healing, right. Right? we talked about that. Right, so that's an observation, didn't get sick. Right? We make these observations, right? And then we try to say, because I know plenty of people who were exposed to the virus and then they died, <laughs> so, right? Or they had complications or they suffered, right? And then they didn't get the, even after they came out of this, they don't have the super antibody. Why do you have something they don't have? What do you think it is? <laughs> right? The grace of God or, or good luck or both. <laughs> right? So, I mean, I, I, you, we talked about you going to church, right? And then why you're a believer. And, and you told me that you just believed in the very beginning. Is that what it took? Right? That you didn't challenge God, right? And you just said, like, I accept. And then you were just like... Was well, that, the that in fact, that in fact, my mom didn't give us any choice. Bro. <laughs> right. You were to church. You will be the right? Voluntold to believe, you know, <laughs> if you don't believe, you know, then, 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 uh, then, then something might not, not go well. So, 
So well, church was always big in the African American community too. And you know, yes. like my mom, you know, so we just grew up with it. It, was, it wasn't like you know had a choice. I mean, it's just something you grew up. That was just part of every Sunday. You knew you're going to church. So the question is, you know, I, I, because I know a lot of um, people in the African American community that did, got got COVID that didn't have what you had, but they go they go to church. Yep. They're believers, right? So now we go and we check off and say, okay, that's not it. But maybe it counts, right? Maybe it counts and contributes, but it's not it. It's not the only thing. The Colgate toothpaste, right? If we if we put a chart here, right? The Colgate toothpaste, right? We have that. All right. Um, you know, it's uh, is it is it George Mason University? All right. Is it that, or or is it the um, or is it the uh, the the high school you went to, right? Right. Was it was it the high school? No, I mean because I'm sure if we did a did, did a check, right? A lot was it living in Virginia? Now that's 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 broader, right? We start looking at these correlations, right? And we start saying, okay, the causation is not the core, you know, these things are not, right? Just because, you know, are all cats four-legged? You know, is it possible to say all cats are four-legged? Well, I'm sure if we looked around, we would find an outlier where the cat isn't four-legged, right? There's probably an outlier. So what is the reason you got to this? And also, because you can be injured, can you also be helped? Can you be made better, right? Um, we talked about your grades, right? And your grades were, you know, you know, B type of student, right? You know, we'll give you that, right? <laughs> in, high, in college yeah. anyway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, B type of student, right? <laughs> uh, and then you moved up, right? We'll just say you moved up to B. Though. Could you have started as an A student, right? If they helped you, who's they, right? The community, if we knew what we know in 2021, do you know what we would have done? If we had a time machine, we would want to go back and, 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 and it's like, say, how do we make this person like even better? But we might have messed them up because maybe it took these exactly. types of hits for exactly. you to be who you are, right? And then and now we do have a time machine, by the way. And it's the time machine of going forward. In 10 years, I guarantee you that by 2031, John Hollis and Dr. Gordon will be both 10 years older. All right? Well, You're that, not that Benjamin Button, right? Certain. Right? You're not Benjamin Button. You don't go down, you know, you're not going younger, right? Your abilities, you know, you're super hard. Like you're an X-Men, right? You're an X-Men. And I'm kind of X-Men-like, right? In the sense, I look for these really exploratory cases. I do it, right? I, I know a dentist that figured out a way to grow second teeth as an adult. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? He's in Brazil. Um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. interesting, right? I, I had another call like this with him. So you're in the league of, of that. You know, he has just different powers, right? You have the super antigen power, all uh, right? It might not do any good with, um, I don't know, pneumonia or something. But, but whatever it is, you have a healing ability. Maybe it does, right? You have an ability to do something with viruses and possibly bacteria. And he could grow teeth. Can you grow teeth, right? You can't. I grow haven't teeth. tried it yet, but, you know. <laughs> he can grow a second set of teeth, right? And and but he requires research, and and you know he he's not he's like uh, no I, I don't want to use um, you know these uh, animation characters, but but you know Lex Luthor wasn't like uh, superhuman, but he had like experiments. You know, of course he went bad at the end, but you know we're talking about like research abilities. I I meet a lot of those, right? Um, and then I meet people like you um, who just have an ability that people want to know, like, how do you have this ability and how do we get it, right? How do we get some of your ability? And we're tracing back. So, you know, the interesting part about it is people with your background will think you're normal. You'll think like, yeah, I had a normal life, right? And that doesn't help at all because when I go and ask, <laughs> right, right? Like, what happened? Nothing, right? So you'll say nothing happened. Oh, how was your, um, how was your uh, childhood years? Fine. Right. That's kind of like, you know, how the call, the call wasn't really like that. I, I, I probed and I, and I, and I'm, I'm good at probing, but you know, you know, what's unique about you is wasn't Superman a journalist? He wasn't was. He? Clark Kent was a journalist. That's yeah, right. Clark Kent was a journalist. You're a journalist, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> you know, so like, you know, are we not finding, you know, the one thing is, you know, where's your cape, right? You know, right now you're a journalist, so I'm not going to know. But at night, you know, at nighttime, you probably have your lowest lane and everything too, right? That's it. You got me. Right. You know, this, this is, 
this is different from BBC. Did you get a lot of dates after BBC? Like millions I mean, of women calling you. There are a lot of people reaching out to you. I mean, I, I know we're f- almost 6,000. No, like Beyonce, messages. you know, people like that, you know, calling you up and saying, you know. No, 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 no? nothing like that. I'll wait till after this one. <laughs> we'll see. You know, we, you're, you're single, right? I am. You're available. Okay. And he's like, he's hot and sexy because he's like, you know, he has this ability, right? And, you know, don't think of what you're seeing now. Think of your children, right? Think of your children. Think about like, he has got the genes, right? Now, there was one flaw of the genes is that your brother did not, the younger brother, right? Did not have, he got COVID, but he wasn't resistant. He doesn't have the super like antigens, right? That's correct. What do you think is the difference? How, how he was just born with asthma and he's overweight, you know, so he was like a prime candidate for the virus. Um, could you, I mean, but you, you got the virus. You yeah. just, you came out of it differently. Yeah. But again, he was overweight and had asthma. So his immune system wasn't as strong naturally anyway. So is it the strength of the immune system? Now that's, that's, that, that's the key right there. I okay. think that's definitely the key. So can you lose your powers? Like, could you think like, you know, just pondering like could you if you got overweight and had like you know i, I would think so i mean i would think it's a possibility yeah I don't, I don't, not trying to find out <laughs> no right why would you want to find see that's an interesting thing is why would you want to find out that you don't you could lose your powers right you but, know a lot of interviews i've talked to i've told people again i've been a sports writer my whole life and i always tell people it's like having a no hitter going to the ninth inning you keep doing what you're doing you're know, going to the ninth inning you've got a no hitter you keep doing what you've been doing so that's exactly what i plan on doing Everything. You plan on staying in shape the rest yeah. of your life, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you a good person, John? I think so. Yeah. I think yeah, so. So you're like good to your neighbors, and yeah. you know, it, it kind of came across, but you know, you never know. And when I did the conversation with you, it was definitely very, very appealing, right? And then you mentioned that even from high school, you had you had stayed in contact with you know, yeah. more than one person. Now that's mm-hmm. that's another oddity, right? Most people lose all their friends from high school. It's different when you go to a boarding school too, though. Yeah. You, know, you live, you live together. You, you, know, you come even closer than say, you know, normal. Right. You went through some trials and tribulations, right? right. Yeah. You grew up, you woke up, you know, you, you were, but you went to the number one boarding school in all of Virginia. It was a great, it's a great school. I got, a, I got, I was blessed to have a great education. Yep. Yeah. You, did you have anything to do with it? You think, should we all be doing that? Sending them all, uh, nah. and it has to be Virginia too, right? Yeah, I don't think it has, you know, anything to do with my medical status. It's just, you know. Because your brother, right? He went to the same school, right? He did. That, and he, didn't, he didn't have that. So but that's good. We, well, he hasn't been started. tested yet, to be honest with you. Huh? He, my older brother has not been tested yet. No, he hasn't been tested yet. But is he in shape? My older brother, yes. Okay. So that'll be, that'll be like. And he was like me. He never got, never got sick either growing up. Now, that'll be interesting. How about your brother when he was growing up, the younger one? Did he get sick? Yeah, I mean, asthma issues all the time. Yeah. But he was he overweight. Like other he was Oh, he was just always overweight? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. Huh. Yeah, my young, older brother and I were both, you know, a lot more athletic, and neither one of us got sick growing up. You know, like, pesticides, you know, as you, as you, as you, as we, as time goes on, we get more pesticides and we get more industrial chemicals in the environment because you know we we, we produce more in the environment right. so the fact that your younger brother is younger than you your older brother you know it might be you know when your mom was growing up right and then these eggs you know woman's born with the husband you know all this stuff the biology right it may have come into contact with something and then and then it affected something else right it might be right we just there's so many invisible things that we don't know but we do what we do know. See, when you can't prove something, you should prove the thing that you can prove, right? So it's it's called like the null hypothesis and and the and the uh, the alternate, right? You should prove the alternate, right? And um, and oftentimes what we have right here is we have you as the alternate, and then we have the other ones, right? The others, the other two siblings. We don't know about the brother yet, but we we have some information. But we believe. And I think it's important to believe this is you can be hurt. You can, you can, you can shift yourself out of that, that blessing that you have. You can lose it, right? We believe that. And part of it, we believe, is staying in shape, right? Staying in shape. Although part of it, the doctors and scientists have told me, you know, once I've got the super antibodies, they're forever stored in my memory cells, my DNA. 
Yes, so for that, that in, particular. Uh, right, for that particular virus, anyway. Yeah, virus. Right. But a new one, like, in, you know, right. yeah, if we introduce you to the, uh, the, uh, the, the swine flu that, would, that happened in the 09 period, we don't know. Like, you probably don't have, you didn't get swine flu, right? So no. you don't have it. But if you take two individuals, right, and you, um, and you measured them, right, and you, you, know, you, you saw whether they get bitten by mosquitoes or not, and they're next to each other, and there's lots of mosquitoes, some people get bitten more than others. And then other people who are bitten then welt up and they have like a huge immune response, right? So you got the virus, you had uh, a, a period, but then when you tested your blood, we found something different. How rare is that difference compared to other people who've gotten the virus? I'm asking you because you know the answer to this. Sure. I was told that basically only 5% of the world's COVID patients have super antibodies, right? And of course, they're all varying levels, offering varying levels of, of protection against the virus. Basically, only 1% have the complete, total, and neutralizing kind that I have. 1% of the 1%. world. 1%. Uh, there's 7.8 billion people in the world, 7.88. Um, and you are the 1%. An Australian scientist recently called me an immunological unicorn. <laughs> You're a unicorn. Wow. The, I told him to make some great business card possibilities, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you put it, you know, you know, I am the unicorn. See, when you go on dates, right, you know, this is, this is for you. If anything I can do for you, right, let people know, right, that we have a unicorn here. If you want unicorns, right, you got to start with a unicorn. So... I see. Well, I'll be sure to try that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've been born out of love. You know, you 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 know, we all we need is love. So so this is very interesting of a finding, um, and you still have it. You still have the glow, right? This is the glow, and and this glow that you have. Um, how's your teeth? Like, you know, do you have like if you don't brush your teeth, does it? Do you have bad breath? No, I don't think so. I've always had pretty good teeth. You know, you don't even have bad breath. Wow. I mean, I think anybody, if you don't brush your teeth like a week or whatever, you're going to have bad breath. You know? I don't know. But, I mean, you know, maybe you, you don't get as bad uh, as bad as a breath as somebody else, right? Maybe, you know? yeah. Some it people clearly have it worse than others. Right. It hasn't been studied enough. But then again, you know, your abilities are just show there's there's something different. And what if we could what if we could get our, our kids a little bit better, right? You know, what was done to you, right? When we think about raising children, raising people, if we knew what you have, right? I'm glad, I'm glad they found you. You, you actually discovered yourself, right? You said you were it's chatting. Kind of random, very lucky. Very, it was like a perfect storm. Like everything had to fall into place and it did. And I was very, Can very- you share that story of what, what sure. exactly happened? Um, basically, Dr. Lance Leota and the George Mason team at his Center for Applied Proteomics and Molecular Medicine began a study of George Mason, this is in April 2020, of George Mason people who had either tested positive for the virus or had been infected with the virus. And they were testing their antibodies um, in the study. I was, of course, as, the, as what, the communications manager, George Mason, I was helping oversee the media outreach, help wrote the media, the uh, press release, heralding the study, start of the study and everything else. Worked and talked with the doctors and scientists just about every day. But there was never a thought one second thought that I was even, I hadn't even gotten sick. And so when the study started in April, there was never even a thought that I might, hey, had joined the study. It wasn't until the study was almost done in late July, where I met with Dr. Leota to talk about their findings. I just happened to mention to him in passing, after being in his office for 45 minutes, was about to leave, mentioned to him in passing that the guy I lived with, the houseman I lived with, was terrible, had gotten terribly sick with COVID and it almost killed him. How lucky I had been to have avoided that, a similar fate. And that's what opened the door up for me to be an 11th hour addition to their research. But 11th still, hour. So I, I think it was like 11.59. Later. It was 11.59, mm -hmm. right? It was a non-11, the 11th hour is 11th hour and the 59th minute. Yeah. Right? In the sense that it right. was the very last slot. Uh, very last what, minute. What date was this? This was July, I think it was 15th or so when I first when I talked to Dr. Leota and mentioned to him. And, okay. it, you know, we, that's opened the door. I was back in his office two days later to get blood and saliva samples. Again, not thinking anything would ever come of it. I thought it'd be kind of cool as Gil said, took part in such a cool scientific study. So you can imagine that my complete and utter shock when Dr. Leoto called me two or three days later and said, not only did you have COVID, but you've got super antibodies that make you immune. 
I was so dumbfounded. I think I've asked him to repeat himself like five times. It was so beyond the pale. Now, what's amazing is that is that you he mentioned specifically that you you actually have protection beyond because people who have this uh, antibodies they fade, and so you're called super antibodies because you're, you're not fading down. That's correct. Most people's antibodies wane after sixty to ninety days. Yeah. Uh, by the t- time I had seen him, you know, took the blood samples in July, so that was what um, what four months or almost four months after I've been infected. And my antibodies are still at 90% uh, concentrations and they were killing everything with the virus. Even when my blood was diluted 10,000 times, it was still killing 90% of the virus, even at that point. What type is your blood? I'm O negative. O negative. Okay. Which is so rare too. I mean, that's the universal seven, donor, seven. right? That's correct. It's universal donor. That means donor. you could take your, your, your blood, right? And you could give exactly. a, a, you know, a, a nano drop to everybody. You could raise a billion dollars, a billion dollars for, you know, for, for my blood, right? You know, and then you could go out there and you could, you're actually, you know, you're already a billionaire. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you can, I'm a unicorn. I'm a potential billionaire, right? You know, <laughs> you got to get yourself a tuxedo. All right. You don't even need a tuxedo. You're good as is, right? So you can <laughs> go out there with anything. Now, this, this will be, I, I'm sure you will be getting different types of calls when this thing goes out there because- they're just not asking the right question. I, I think you have something really, really rare and special. And then you also, um, you know, shared the story. Now, how did your roommate get the COVID? We don't know for a fact. He was already working from home by that point. Um, so, we, you know, you don't know for 100% certainty, but I would say most likely probably from me during those four days when I had, I was congested. You know, it was obviously, so, you know. so you could, even though you were building up this, you could give it to him, right? Correct. So if you walked in the store and you had COVID on your, on your, on your clothing and someone came next to you, they could probably contract it because the virus is the virus. That's interesting. The only place I was going during that time was to work at George Mason University. I was I mean, pretty much at that point, everything else was shut down, if you recall. Did um, they have any hoping- infected? Did the George Mason have any infected? There were a lot of people there in the administrative building of which I worked who had it. And so wow. I'm almost certainty, with this 100% certainty, I was infected somewhere in, in the George Mason University. Now, yeah. do we know anything about like your blood uh, against like the variant D or the variant Lambda? Um, we just found out about three weeks ago that my blood does kill the Delta variant as well. Wow. Okay. You, I don't you, know yet about the Lambda variant, but I'm sure I'll be finding out soon enough. But, you know, what's interesting about some of the studies around this is that your antibodies don't just attach to the, the pointy, you know, the pointy stuff. You, 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 you basically you go, you surround the thing, you rip the thing apart. Right. They're very aggressive and going after every, every antigen that they, they come in contact with basically. Yeah. So it's like anything that doesn't belong, you rip it apart. So I don't know like how we're going to do this, but we got to look at you with the flu viruses, the influenza viruses, other viruses, and say, like, if you generate antibodies against things that you come into contact, you've never seen before, you know what it looks like very quickly, and then you rip it apart. I mean, isn't that crazy? It is crazy. I mean, just, you know, I, I just told Dr. Leoto since March or whatever, late March, since I got the super antibodies, I've not had as much as a, a cold, runny nose, sore throat, nothing, not even allergies, nothing this year. But you used to have allergies when you were down in Georgia, you told me. I did. It was about that same time of year, late March, early April, when the flowers are blooming and it's pollen on your, on your car. In fact, when I got first became infected, when I was congested, I thought it was just allergies again that are typical for that time of year. Did not have that this year. Oh, so if we got you like, you know, even like, do you have a six pack? No, not in, I had, had it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you, so he, he, so you know, he doesn't need a six pack. You don't need a six pack to, to develop super antibodies, right? That's correct. You're, just like, you're warm and fuzzy like a teddy bear, and you you can still be right. You can still be <laughs> you know you can still be resistant and a unicorn, right? Uh, and a potential billionaire. Okay, so that, now we know more information, right? We need to look at things and 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 really delineate what's going on. And you can you could probably you know try crest toothpaste, and pr- probably you're still just as good, right? So, <laughs> a question for Doctor Leota that you know you're you're good friends with him, right? I would want you to ask him is. Can you be made any better, right? If you if you were healthier, even healthier than you are, right? If if you were coached, right, 
Could you be made even better? Can you be improved upon that you're so good? Could you be a trillionaire? Could you be, you know, I don't want to say two horns with a unicorn, right? That doesn't make you better. Well, but, actually, I've already started along those lines. I recently got my first uh, COVID shot on July 20th. I'll be getting my second one next Monday. And it's going to augment my booster immune system even more. You're going to augment yourself. Did you ever get flu shots? Uh, rarely. Maybe twice in the last 10 years or so. It's one of those deals like, well, I'll do it. Then there's always a line. You just never get around to doing it. Always meant to, but just never did. Whatever. You mentioned two shots. So you got you got the newer type, right? You got the uh, either the Pfizer or the Moderna. I got the Pfizer shot on July okay. 20th, the first one. Yeah. I get the second one next next week. Okay. Yeah, I, I worked at Pfizer a long time ago. Great okay. company. Yeah. And then all kinds of things, you know, we want to say good things, <laughs> but it's just like, it's just like, it's amazing that, that you have this ability. And I mean, like some people will probably like, see, here's some weird questions for you to ask Dr. Lee. Could you get AIDS? Could you get the HIV virus? Like, would you rip that thing apart? I could, too? Yes. In fact, that was one, one, I think it was in November. Scientists called me one day and said they were trying my blood against HIV. I guess it's like FDA rule, rule, laws or something. I had to do it or something to that effect. That's how it was explained to me. But, you know, I, it was like 8.30 in the morning. I went the whole day wondering whether blood was going to kill HIV. It did not. My blood did not kill HIV. But just getting that phone call was just crazy enough as it is. Okay. So, all right. So you asked the question. You, you know I'm a scientist when I ask questions like that. And we never exchanged information about this. You're my witness, right? And, uh, and you know, so you, you are not immune to HIV. That's correct. Okay. That's, that's very interesting, right? Another, so that's, that's one kryptonite, right, that we cannot expose you to. What other kryptonites, right, we need to understand more about, you know, your blood. And because HIV would, would, would allow, it wouldn't prevent you from making the memory against them. So, so you need to have your memory, your, your memory cells and all those things, your T cells intact. Right, so you need to have those intact. Yeah. You know, um, what other things? Um, can you get cancer? Right. I don't know. I know there's implications. People, you know, with this, just because apparently, I guess you're a doctor. You can explain this better than I. But apparently, the COVID attacks healthy cells in a very similar way that cancer does. Mm. And so, you know, they're wondering. You know, the fact that COVID came come close to touching my cells, what the implications that could be. So there's cancer implications right. as well. But as far as could I get cancer, I don't know. I've never had cancer. And God willing, never will. That's right. We don't want you to, you're a prized possession, you know. Now, when you, um, just like you described the booster, right, the booster shots, when you have offspring, right, you have offspring, nature tends to improve upon whatever the last creation was based on what you've seen. Um, and so the later you have children, Right. The more it's, it's, the, it's the wrong term to call it intelligence because it, you know, at least in 2021, we wouldn't call it intelligent sperm, but um, your experience, right. Your experience, I mean, imagine this, you also have intelligent sperm. You know, if you, <laughs> you sell your sperm every day, you know, it's like, um, you know, if, if you come into contact with things, you learn, your body learns from it. Right. And because sperm are constantly reproducing, you may have learned some things and, um, how old is your son? My son is 16 and 16. Uh, he has not been tested yet, but okay. we will eventually get him tested. Okay. So if it's carried by male, right? If it's, you know, your XY, uh, females are XX. If it's, uh, if it's, if it's not sex linked for the female side and it's XY, um, it'll be interesting to see what happened. Well, there is an X in your, in your, in yourself, you know, but how was it transferred, right? Did, did your son get your X? No, your son's not going to get your X. Your son gets your Y. That's why he's a, he's a son. He will be Y and X gets his X from his mother. So that'll be interesting to see. Now, does your son not get sick? He has never been sick. He's 16 years old, has never been sick. Not once. So then it might not be sex linked, right? It might not be sex linked. It's probably just like, like I said, you know, if a drop of your blood, does it catalyze? Like, let me give you a weird non-doctor, but more scientist question is, if we took a piece of the earth, a piece, all right, whatever you like with organisms and everything, and somehow the moon was next to the earth in the same orbital distance from the sun, right? The, sun, the moon is not, right? The moon is obviously not. But if the moon were in the same distance, right? Uh, and, and if, if we could move the moon, right. Okay. If we put a piece of the earth on there, right. This is called seeding. 
would the earth be, you know, would the earth's organisms be able to grow on the moon, right? Would, would that happen, right? We don't know the answer to that because we, can, we cannot do that, right? That cannot be done. So we theorize, right? We theorize these things because it, you know, we don't want to talk about the, you know, just think everything's impossible. We want to think about the possible. Is that your blood, if it was donated to somebody, what happens, right? What happens? Well, Dr. Leo, and that was, of course, one of my first questions, but they said in theory, of course, it's never been done, but in theory, yes, I could just hook my arm up via transfusion to somebody and give them my blood and it would, it would, it would cure them or help them. Yeah. But they stress that the blood, those antibodies have to be um, applied er as early as possible. Basically, they said the antibodies will stop, it would kill the virus, but it could not necessarily undo the damage that's already been done. So the earlier that is given to somebody, the better. Right, right. Like, like sneak venom in some ways, right? You know, right. very you, similar. Right, yeah. So when you do this, obviously the, the, the whole thing grows exponentially, the exponential growth. The virus goes in there and it pops these, the, these cells and it produces massive amounts of viruses, right? And they go and they keep popping the alveolar sacs and all those other things. But the protective capability, right, you know, of your blood, oh, negative. I mean, how good is that? I mean, if you were like, you know, if you were AB, right, you know, we can't help right. anybody. But, you know, we'd have to extract or do something. But there's no extra steps involved with your blood. Exactly. It's like, the, yeah. I mean, everything that had to go right has so far has gone right. So I feel very, very appreciative you're born, about that. You're born to be good. You know, you're born <laughs> ready. Right? You know, <laughs> I got a lot of people who disagree with that, but <laughs> some of my teachers back in the day may have something to say about that. Yeah. I mean, oh, negative. Right. I mean, how 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 great is that? Wow. This is that's incredible. very fortuitous. That's for sure. Yeah. It seems a lot easier. What, what type, do you know the blood type of your mom? I do not. I, I think she's O negative too, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Do you have, did find you out. have a we'll conversation with her about this whole thing? Yeah. You did, right? What, what was her thoughts? I mean, they, she was, you know, they were just dumbfounded like everybody else. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking like the middle of a global pandemic, you know, with people dying and getting terribly sick all over in the world. And all of a sudden you hear your son's been told he's into it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a surreal story and a little, you know, difficult to grasp for everybody, I guess, in the beginning. You still go to work? Me, sure do. Oh. Sure do. You just do that for fun, right? You know you're, uh, you're a potential billionaire. <laughs> so, you know, it's like people, it's like you would still work, right? You'd still do everything once you're a billionaire? Uh, oh, I, I don't know. Late by year. I always joke with Dr. Lyoto, though. Like, you know, what's going to happen to me if I, you know, walk out of here and get hit by a Mack truck? I told him, just make sure they scrape up the blood or something. <laughs> you need to be protected. I mean, you know, seriously. I mean, you know, you, you're like, you're like an asset. <laughs> you're the asset of the world. I mean, you, you, you should not be going to the wrong places. You need to be protected because this is, this is a global finding. It to is. find you in the United States, I mean, I'm glad I had to do a lot of research to make sure you're real, you know, before <laughs> I, before I, before I did the call, because I said, really, seriously, you know, and BBC, you know, and then, and then, you know, the YouTube for, that was pushed out about you, there were like, I don't know, only 6,000 people watched it. So I'm thinking like, they don't, they, they don't, they don't even think it's real, right? which is good. We don't want everyone to think it's real right now. We need to protect you. And it gives so far beyond the pale. That's the thing. You know, literally this, this virus is going around the globe, like a runaway locomotive. And so they right. hear that this one guy is just completely immune to not only the virus, but every variant just sounds crazy. It's just hard to believe. It was hard well, for me to believe. believe now. I mean, you know, now that I'm on it, see, I don't, I don't chase things that are fake things. I don't go after fake things. If I look at it and it's real, it's real. So, so the chance of it being real, you know, yeah. Um, that's why nobody at Harvard and other things, you know, we, we don't chase things that are, are fake, right? So when I look at something and I see this, I said, this is really peculiar. You guys don't even believe it's so, it's too good to be true. So you think it's not true, right? This type of saying, that's totally false, right? If it's too good to be true, you should evaluate whether or not it's true or not, right? You should like, I'm thinking like, what titles do they have? You know, you don't, even knighting you would not be enough. If we called you, <laughs> we called you Sir John Hollis, that would not do you justice. <laughs> you, you should be Unicorn John Hollis. I mean, is that some new name, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, you, you realize how special you are. Yeah. I, I, 
Does Oprah company. know yet? Does Oprah know yet? We need, you know, oh my gosh, you know. I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, they must not be like looking at this right. Because when I look at, you know, I've, I've made some really interesting, um, profound returns on, on investing in things. Um, and when people said they threw it in the garbage can, it's worth 5,000 times more than the, you know, it was in the garbage can, but it's worth, I, 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 you know, so I look at things and I say, you don't understand he's O negative. Now, now I, I had that question right after we did the call last week. I said, what type of blood is it? Does he have now that now we know, right? This is tremendous. This is absolutely tremendous. Yeah. 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 I mean, if your if your blood went to your brother, your younger brother, what would that do, right? I mean, you know, it's like let's know, just kind of waiting for the you get the hookup with some transfusion. I, I'm kind of curious. I always tell all my friends from college, if you guys want to be a guinea pig, just, just you'll need a, a transfusion. That's a lot. I mean, I'm just talking about a, a drop of this, right? They're right there, and then and then let it, you know, who really knows? We don't really know. I mean, oftentimes we throw a lot of extras on there, just extract the plasma, do all that. I'm talking about like really crude stuff, it's like just you know, scratch, scratch, right? And then exchange, right? That is just um, phenomenal. That's just phenomenal. I'm not saying we do that uh, because we're in 2021, we have the tools and equipment to do it, you know, a certain way. But I'm just saying like, if you go back to the 1800s and what we discovered back then, people just like, even in the 1900s, we did, we did things like really crude way and it worked. Penicillin, how it was discovered, right? With cantaloupes. Mm -hmm. It was just moldy cantaloupes. And then, you know, and they just, that's how we did it. So, so the blood is magical, right? And, and we, we have not found all the limits of the blood. And now that we know something about you, how can you make yourself better? Like, tell me something is, do you, do you, do you, um, have you tried eating healthier? I mean, I, I go, I go, I do pretty good. I mean, you know, there's always bad stretches. Long time I was, I was a sports writer. I think I told you that. And so, of course, you know, you're traveling all the time. I mean, literally, I was averaging like, I think I went 10 years averaging at least one night, like over 30 states a year, 35 states a year. You know, when you're going to hotels and airports all the time. You don't necessarily eat the best all the time then. But for the most part, I did pretty good, especially, you know, out of season and everything. I covered basketball, covered a lot of basketball. So you do, would you given the choice, right, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, let's say you had a uh, fried food or, you know, a salad, what do you choose normally? I mean, in most part, I eat pretty good. I mean, you know, every now and now and then I'll get fried food, but no, I don't. I don't go crazy. I rarely. You know what I mean is that food. I ask you something like this, right? Because you're just immune, right? And you're just generally healthy. You you'll just you won't think much of it. But let me give you some more um, some more context around it. I have met people who are incredible singers, but they smoke. They're smokers. Now we know, right? This is this is definitive stuff. We now know that when you sing, it improves your lungs. And if they were not singers and they actually were smokers, what would what would happen? Right? Probably not as good as the fact that they're singers. But they, as the subject, don't know that. They don't know that. Um, it's like um, it's like now knowing this information. It might actually change how you eat now <laughs> or what choices you make. It's we know that when things are charred, they cause more cancer. So say, let's just imagine if your superpower was 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 actually measurable as a volume, right? A canister of superpower. Good for your life. You got one full canister. And the more you do to your body, the 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 less your you know your 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 solutions are left you have fewer and fewer drops of this stuff to go around so every time you eat charred food you might use it up um if it's burnt to a, cr a crispy crust and it's all you know all burnt out if you smoke you'll use your you use up your your serum right if we if we could if we had that theory right and you know then what would you do right you you might look at it differently right you're also you do age right so you might as you age, your superpowers may be diminished, right? They may be diminished. But, you know, people have gone to the 100 years old and have perfect immune systems. What kills them is something else. But, you know, right. it's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's that immune system. So I, I wonder when I, when I talk with you, you know, is, um, is if you knew, if you knew, um, well, in other words, if you saved a couple of vials of your blood, a couple bags of your blood when you were 10 years old, 
right? 15 years old, and then re-injected it back into yourself, right? Now, you know, and it was kept under special temperatures and controlled, right? Would you be able to make yourself better because back then you were younger, right? We don't know that because we can't do that anymore, right? That's gone, right? But, um, but we, we have data today that knows that if you, if you save parts of yourself, and then were to re-inject it. They do that with athletes. You said you covered sports, right? So yeah. athletes have done that. You know, they don't save it from when they're 10 years old, but they save it for like a few months ago and then they re-inject it and they find that they get certain capabilities from that. Yeah. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, that would be, right? I'm, I'm just looking at the exploratory things. Like, you know, can you, you know, if we, if you get burnt, right? I'm sure you know, you can get burnt. I burnt myself, right? See, I, I burnt myself right here the other day, touching something. And, um, and then how do you heal? Whether you put aloe on that, whether you put other things on there, it will change how the, the wound heals itself. And there's something also called unhealing wounds. Sometimes there's stuff in there that infects it and your wounds don't heal. I, I don't know your limits, but knowing that you have limits, and then, and, then, and then you have limitations on how much powers you have and to protect that powers, that would be great. I'm just giving you information that, that in my walks of life, right? I've, I've uh, experienced and I said, what would happen to you if you were conscious of eating a certain way, right? And you protected yourself. Would you be able to preserve your capabilities for the next virus, for the next occurrence, for the next things, so that you're just as good as before. I, yeah. I would hope so. I and mean, that's what I would try to do, you know? Yeah. Well, you didn't have the information. Now you have the information, yeah. right? You now know about like, what if we move the moon? This will never happen because no one will allow that. You know, the ocean tidal waves would change, but you know, if the moon was in the same orbital distance from the sun and we put a piece of the earth on, I mean, this is good for a movie, you know, it's like, if anyone wants the movie rights from this show, you know, that's, that's, they'll have to contact us. We said it first here, right? You know, moving the moon to the same orbital. Didn't they do that in Star Wars? They had the Death Star. They actually that's learned right. how to move planets, right? And they were moving around. It was very, you know, very, very peculiar, profound stuff. So science, right? You, you have like, you have all your hair, you have all your stuff. Is there anything wrong with you? Like, and, and, you know, physically, have you ever run into anything that was, you have eczema? Nope. No, um, eczema, right? I've been very blessed. I have great vision. Do not wear glasses. I'm 54 years old. Do not wear glasses. Oh, do you have like, do you need like uh, um, those uh, readers? Reading glasses? No, do not. You don't even need reading glasses. Wow. No. Oh, wow. Do you, how often do you need your teeth clean? Do you clean your teeth? I get them clean. Like, try tw twice a year, but at least once a year anyway. Try okay. twice a year. All right. That's just, you know, you might just do that because everyone does that. Just habit growing up as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Good habit. I mean, your teeth are straight. Did you? Did you have? Uh, did you have um, orthodontics? Um, I think one time I was in third grade. I had a, the the front tooth, my top tooth, was coming in crooked, and I had a cap put on it for like six months. I remember I fought my mom and that tooth and nail, and I, you know. But I you never had like day. full braces. You never had no, like no. You didn't look. Look at how straight his teeth are. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'll do this. I didn't have braces uh, either. You know? And so, yeah, this is great. This is incredible. So, wow. Very lucky, that's all. Hmm. Now, the, 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 that's why we have the call today. Is it luck? Is it luck? But, yeah, I've also had lots of broken bones, though. I can tell you that. I've got a long history of broken more bones than I care to remember playing sports. Now, causation, right? Is, is, is breaking your bones part of you becoming, having the super energy? What do you think? What do you say to that? No. See? No. This is don't go and break your bones. That's not right. that's not no like not like unless science. No, I'm just saying breaks. I'm not Superman. That's all I'm saying. That, that's my point. Yeah, right. But but some people might think, wait a minute, he broke his bones more often than others. I need to break my bones too. Let me you know? let me say I've broken. I've had three broken ankles. I've broken my wrist. I've broken ribs. I've had concussions. Um, broken all my fingers at least twice. Broken like. Five all your toes. fingers at least like stop there all your fingers at least twice yeah this is playing basketball you play basketball and football your hands are always out and so you, you always catch a ball right in the fingers so that you know that stinks it's no fun break any anything else what else did you break let's see uh 
uh, torn the lateral meniscus in my knee, needed my knee arthroscopic surgery, tore my Achilles tendon, um, had my eye knocked out by a swing when I was, when I was young. What? Really? I was four years old. I got hit by an eye by a swing, one of those old types of metal swings. You know, the eye, of course, is a muscle. Literally popped my eye, left eye out down my cheek. And my mom, my, mom, my father was in the Army. So they made, my mom made them take, we live in Maryland. My mom made them take me to Walter Reed Medical Center. They weren't even sure they could guarantee they could save my eye, let alone give me 20-20 vision. Now, they had an eight-hour eight hour operation. I was in the hospital for about six weeks. And uh, they took a piece of skin from my hip to help sew my eye back in. The only person in my family doesn't wear glasses. I was very blessed. <laughs> only person in the family, but the eye has fallen out before. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This just gets it's better crazy. and better. This gets better and better. See, the other thing is, you think you are, like, unless I have you and I keep probing, right, this stuff doesn't get out. BBC never covered any of this. Well, I mean, I don't know. There's just... It's a lot to put in there one, one episode. Right. How, how did you not tell them this? Right. This is like, you know, have you used any drugs? No, I've never done drugs. Never smoked a cigarette. Nothing. 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 Never. never I'm glad never, you didn't. Right. So that, that's a that's a that's a good thing because you could you could use up your serum. You know, that's I a, never that's tried a good marijuana. Concept. Nothing. Never smoked a cigarette. Nothing. No drugs of any kind. Nothing. Marijuana, people don't think of it as a drug these days. Oh, I, I understand. I don't pass judgment either way. I'm just yeah. it's my personal choice not to do it. I never have and never will. Okay. Wow. Alcohol? Alcohol. I drink beer with my friends from college a lot. Okay. So beer, beer doesn't do anything. Do you drink coffee? Nope. Do not drink coffee. I only tried a sip of it once in my life. Didn't like it. I've never tried it ever since. Wow. How, how is your sleep? I sleep, Are you great. To, I sleep, sleep great. Are you able to just like, whenever you're tired, you just go to sleep? I wasn't always that way, but when it became a sports role, you know, growing up, I had a hard time sleeping and think anything that moved, cars, trains, buses, whatever, but becoming a sports writer, traveling as much as I did, sometimes as many on a flight three times a week, sometimes you learn to get your sleep whenever and wherever you can. So now I can fall asleep in a plane before it pulls out of the gate. <laughs> really? Wow. You get so tired, you have no choice. Okay. Uh, and you just, you just work hard and you get tired and you, you love what you do, right? I do. I yeah. Do. I enjoy what yeah. I do. You know, yeah. Enjoy yeah. writing, enjoy meeting people and traveling, all that stuff. You know, there's a quote that says, um, maybe it's from me modifying it. I don't remember, but it's like, you might love what you do, but if what you do doesn't love you back, it can kind of affect your love of what you do. Right. So, no so yeah, you know, so, so I mean, you might not have the right boss. You might not have the right set up the environment might not be but it seems like you know you you're a pretty go lucky kind of guy you know yeah, I mean, yeah. you know you know life is you know 10 percent what happens to you 90 percent how you respond to it i've always been a that belief you know and there'll be good things that happen to you be bad things Qu question is how we deal with it and that's that's a great statement there 90 percent of how you react that's that's reactive what i what i want to introduce in our conversation for you even is what would happen if you became proactive knowing now that you have this ability knowing this that you are a prized asset knowing that your son might be and we'll know soon right how you know within weeks we'll know if you are a prized asset and you knew that when you were 15 years old 16 years old how do you <laughs> right he's about to find out right um you know what do you do with the rest of your life right knowing that you're a prized asset? I mean, for him, you know, if he finds out, it, it can certainly change how he goes, looks at life. I mean, yes, it, it, you know, it really could. I mean, I don't know how it couldn't because there's so many the implications are so wide ranging and so far reaching. Um, you know what's know amazing not is, um, is if Einstein knew at 16, he was a prized asset, we know what he did, right? If Leonardo da Vinci knew that he was a prized asset, right, when he was 16, I'm of the belief, and I'll be very open here, is everybody has a certain ability, different ones, right? But they all are prized assets to contribute. Now, when you take the person and you put them in the wrong environment, then they can't glow. They can't really improve their capabilities. And so your capability isn't to stand in front of a moving train, right? Your capability is being who you are and during COVID, your your stuff came out. You know, you 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 got to your level. 
what if we were able to know this when you were 16 years old? What if you knew that when you were five years old? How many Mother Teresas, we know we have one in the history of the earth, how many Abraham Lincolns, Mother Teresas, have we lost along the way? Because the individual who, was, who had superpowers didn't know about it. Right. But I mean, they still need guidance. I know for me, when I was 16 years old, if hmm. somebody told me when I was 16 years old, hey, you got super antibodies, blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's great, but I, would, I wouldn't have lacked the maturity I needed to really see it for what it, for what it was. I would have needed yeah. guidance, whether my mother, you know, teacher, somebody to help guide me along the way. Because so you, you know, were, you you were, were not guided. Things. If you weren't guided, you wouldn't become who you are today, you're saying, right? So you, who guided you the most? Uh, you know, teachers, my mom, and, you know, great teachers. Um, what did she say to you, your mom? What did she do? Uh, she just let us know, all three of us know at a young age, you know, first of all, they're, you know, you know, to, to whom much is given, much is expected kind of thing, you know, and we're all bright, you know, and um, you've been blessed with, with this gift to be bright. You know, you, you expected to do something with it. And we had a lot of people help us. And, you know, I've always been the belief that, you know, you pay that blessing forward. You know, I always tell my son all the time that we all have an obligation to make this world a better place than it was before we arrived. Just never in a million years, I might have imagined this might be how I might do it. But we all play a role one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Each, one, each person is a different role. This is incredible. So you you uh, you try to pay it forward and teach your son the same things your mom yep. taught you, right? Right. Well, that's why it's so important for me to get, you know, go forward with his, with his blood stuff and really, you know, have my son see me instead of just talking about it. You know, words, words are great, but actions speak louder than words. You know, I want him to see me doing this, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, share this video with him. I'll, I'll get you a copy. I mean, I think that it'll be really good for him to see that you're, you're willing to share, you know, your story, the details, right? Sharing this, you didn't have to, right? You don't have to. You, you have this, you know, you're protected. Let them all die, right? You know, but you it's funny you that. mentioned that because I, I, like I said, I got over 6,000 emails around, around the world. And there were a whole bunch of people who said I should do just that. Say you're crazy to help the white man, blah, blah, blah. You should just be thankful. Really? You heard that? You got, you, got, you got emails like that? Several. Wow. And crazy I, I, to help I, the know, white man. Oh. Yeah, it's, that's just not me. My yeah. mother didn't raise me that way, you know. You know, get a chance, you know, plenty of people help me along the way. You pay that blessing forward. And the life that I potentially could help save could be somebody that I know or love. Right. You know, so that's just, that's not even a thought. Hmm. Well, we're very blessed the fact that you were protected in that sense, right? That you grew up mentally um, and your heart was protected so that you're a, you're a giver, right? As opposed to a taker. And that's what I, I, you know, if there's anything about this show uh, and this interview and when people watch it is like, we all have these abilities, but what happens if we are raised in a way that we're not giving, right? And we're, we're now, we're now just want to keep our gifts to ourselves and we don't build community. The world is going to have some pretty, you know, interesting um, and, and dramatic turbulences. That's just the fact of, you know, being, being on earth for so long there are turbulences that are coming and there's certain things that we, some things that people have created unknowingly and other things is just going to happen just because of time, like volcanoes erupting and stuff like that, right? Earthquakes and, you know, but if we all live together as a community, if we all think proactively, right? Your message by default is inspirational because you didn't do a lot, you know, you didn't do any drugs, right? You didn't do anything. So, you know, all you drank was some beer, um, you know, that kind of thing is inspirational, right? But if we protected you ahead of time and, and, and made certain that you were protected, right? I think we don't do enough of that protection. Oftentimes we just say, let it be, right? And, you know, you randomly became this way, which is, which is amazing. That's a true find. Uh, but you can be hurt. You could have lost. I mean, I, I often ask people, if you're looking for love, what happens if your soulmate's not there, right? What if they got killed somewhere, right? And you got to obviously going to find other people are compatible with, but, but there are certain compatibilities that are perfect matches and then others that are slightly mismatched, but still can be matched. How do you protect the younger generation so that when they come forward, they know that we cared about them. So they don't say like, I don't care about the older, uh, the older generation. And that's, 
that's something that needs to be repaired. And I think that right. you and you stand you're a great role model for that. Thank you, thank you. For me, though, I always thought it's all about teaching the young kids the right way, the right thing, the difference between right and wrong. That's one thing I, I stress with my son. Um, I'm not going to be with him every second of the day, you know. But he, I always know that because of the way he was raised, he's not. No matter what, even if I'm not there, he's not going to go. But so far off, off the beaten path because he knows the difference between right and wrong. You know, you you fail, you fall down, you make mistakes. That's part of life. And those experiences collectively make us who we are. And I think that sports was really important because sports gives you that confidence. It's a metaphor right? for life too. Yeah, and that you can you go fail, ahead you... and tackle something and do something right. Yep. And, and, and no matter how hard it is, you just keep working at it and you'll get better, right? And you Whether fail and you, you hate that feeling. It makes you, makes you get determined to get up and do it right the next time. You work, learn to work with people who are different from you, have different ideas from you, different backgrounds from you, different races than you, you know, but you yeah. get up and you do it right the next time. And you work together collectively to achieve a common goal. That's the what do you sport. think is, um, is the reason people, people are, are the way the, the, the people sent you those emails and, and they were, they were saying that, what, what do you think? Do you think it's had, obviously had some bad experiences, you know, that, you bad know, experience, our experiences right? shape us who, who we are and how we think, you know, and yeah. they've obviously had bad experiences. You know, I didn't ask, I didn't even return those emails because quite honestly, you know, you're not going to change anybody's opinion with a you know, return to email anyway. It's a waste of time, but I just want people to see how I, how I live, live my life. And that, that speaks for me, you know, but I, I can't imagine no matter how many bad, experience, we've all had bad things happen to us, been disappointed. That's life. But I can't well, imagine two steps back, but then three steps forward. Right. You know, right. you might have five steps back and six steps forward, or it may be three steps and then four steps, but you have to take it in different bounds. I mean, the, the, um, the speculum, right. Which was discovered by Dr. Sims. He used African slaves to do that. Right. But that was a different time period when everyone was doing it, right? And then he did something, and then that that led to the speculum. And we, we were taught this in medical school. It's not great. It's not something you're proud of. But then there were these studies, the Tuskegee trials and all that. But that's, and, and I think what happened was BBC, the way they positioned this was they positioned it like, here's somebody super, he's now willing to give his stuff. And then look at the past of what it's like, we've gone a long way. I don't know, it's a presentation that may have created this magnet to attract people and it reminded them, oh, you know, and, and in that context, but this recording, right? This is a different context. You're wholesome. You're, you're, you're giving, <laughs> you're, you know, you're a giver, right? You're a giver, right? I'm Dr. Wholesome. So you're, you're wholesome. You know, I give you the blessing that you're wholesome. You're doing this and you're sharing, giving your, your asset to, uh, to Dr. Leota. I'm very excited to know like how your son turns out, right? And then also I'll your let you know. Please, we'll find out. Please, um, well, you know, we might not have to put you back on here just to just to do that, but we, you know, please send me an update, I and will. I'll update the uh, the viewers so that they know um, what happened because we all we're all very excited about this. This may be um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This may be the beginning of a massive solution. Thank you very much. I'm you know. It's been the most surreal ride of my life, but uh, I'm happy and proud to be a part of it. Um, do you still wear a mask when you go out? Um, I don't, but I, I might just. Now that you talk to me, right? It's like you're leaving a good message for people. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny you ask, because after the BBC story ran, the video, I, a lot of people in emails ask me, why are you still wearing a mask? And I told them I didn't do it for me, because a lot of people I run into may not be aware of my medical status. And, it, you know. And it's right. quite honestly, I just don't feel like telling a story every time. <laughs> it's much and also easier. flaunting, right? Flaunting that, okay, then I, you know. Well, that, that's part yeah. of it. But also just, you know, taking time to explain the whole story. Just, I just don't feel like, you know, sometimes you're in a hurry, you just got stuff to do. You just don't feel like going through it. And if somebody sees you, they don't know who you are. They see you're not wearing a mask. They're going to think worst case scenario. So I just, it's just easier to wear a mask. I love how you hesitated and then thought about how to answer that because it was, it was just something I, came to my mind, but you're just, you're just wholesome, right? You just, you're a holistic person where you think and you're considering you're wearing other people's hats. I mean, for all who are watching out there, I mean, John Hollis, you're, 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 you're a great person. You're, you're, you're very, Thank very you so good. Much. Number one. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. True American.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you for having me. Right. Appreciate uh, it. I saluted you. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you even though you know, you know, it's it's not anything along those levels. It's it's just good to uh, to have someone like you uh, be so considerate out there. Thank you. We hopefully find a few more people. We can get to the bottom of this and rid the world of the scourge that is COVID nineteen. I hope people watching this will you know, make more considerate individuals out there. We need we need that. That's what we need right now. Yep, I agree. For the next ten years, it's all about humans loving other humans. I agree totally. Great. So thank you very much for coming on here. That's a, a you know basically an hour long, and uh, and we will um, we'll be praying for you. Thanks a lot, Gordon. When is where does this, uh, where, where will this appear? Uh, let me stop the recording, um, okay. and then it'll be. Um,